Hi, I'm Effie. This is What Effie Reads and today I'm going to be running through some upcoming releases that I think my best friend Shannon, whose channel is Head in the Books, would really be interested in. So I was recently going through and making my own list of my most anticipated releases for the rest of the year and whilst I was going through that list I realised that there were a few that I was like, oh, I feel like that's exactly Shannon's taste. So I'm making this list. Shannon hasn't seen this list yet. And she's going to pick three books that she thinks sound most appealing from this list. And then we are both going to read them at some point and share our thoughts. So this list consists of 10 books, five of them already appeared on my most anticipated list and aside from I could only have five books that were crossover, the only other limitation was that if I know that Shannon's already said she is anticipating its release, it doesn't make this list. These are in theory books that either haven't been on her radar at all or have been on the periphery and she may have forgotten about. So let's just get cracking into this list. First up we have The Marble Queen by Anna Kopp and Gabrielle Carey. This comes out on the 14th of September and the premise of this is that a princess needs a marriage alliance for the sake of her kingdom and she unwittingly accepts the proposal of the princess rather than the prince of a neighbouring kingdom. So the reasons why I think this will appeal to Shannon, it's sapphic, it's a graphic novel so it's going to be quick and easy to get through and there's also mention of anxiety disorders in the blurb which sounds like something that, well, is very much up Shannon Street, but also to an extent is mine. I should also point us out as well, all of these books on my list are things that I'm anticipating. The five that aren't on my most anticipated, I'm still anticipating, they just didn't make the cut for my top 10. The only reason I can think of why Shannon may not vibe with this book is if the art style doesn't work for her. As of yet, I've only seen the cover. I'm not sure if there are any pages floating around showing what the art style looks like inside. But I know for me, art style can be a big factor in whether I enjoy a graphic novel or not. And this could be the case here. Another downside potentially could be that it's a little bit on the pricier side. Like, with these all being new releases they are going to tend to be a little bit more pricey at the time of filming this is £13.71 on Amazon and that is for a paperback but it is a graphic novel and those do skew slightly more expensive. The next book is Delicate Condition by Danielle Valentine. This has been described as a modern feminist take on Rosemary's Baby. So it sounds like there's going to be potentially supernatural elements, there's potentially elements of an unreliable narrator, as our main character called Anna isn't really sure what's going on and everyone around her is telling her that nothing's happening, everything's perfectly fine, but she's certain that things aren't quite as they seem. Reasons why I think Shannon would enjoy this, the blurb is definitely giving me horror vibes and it sounds incredibly creepy, like the idea of a monster growing inside your body. Oof. Also, I think the idea of an unreliable narrator, everyone saying that what's going on in your life isn't what you think's going on would be quite creepy. 
As for things that maybe make this book less appealing to Shannon, I think it's going to be the the pregnancy aspect of it because books that involve pregnancy, motherhood, etc. aren't necessarily for everyone. Now, I do think this is something that's going to appeal, um, especially with the is it supernatural, is it not, and the kind of horror vibes I'm getting from the blurb. The next book that makes the list is This Pact Is Not Ours by Zachary Sergi, and it comes out on the 3rd of October. This book takes place at a summer camp where a group of friends find out that every generation a pact has been made in blood to keep the camp pristine. And honestly, the kind of summer camp horror potential aspect of it sounds incredible, but add into that the fact that this is queer and there is discussion of anxiety attacks in the blurb and I just think this is going to be exactly up Shannon Street. I also think that whilst it's a little unclear whether there are actual supernatural forces at play in this book, I think this book could deliver on what Hyde didn't deliver on and I think that could make for a really interesting book because I know that Shannon was disappointed that Hyde didn't deliver. Next up we have The Night Hunt by Alexandra Cristo. It comes out on the 10th of October and this story follows an immortal who hunts fear and nightmare and a herald who is responsible for carrying messages and ferrying the dead as a punishment but they don't remember the crime. These two end up having to form an unlikely partnership and part of what they need to do is kill a vampire, a banshee and a god that's destroyed their lives. This blurb is giving me slight god killer vibes. I haven't read god killer yet but I know that it's a book that appealed to Shannon so with this giving similar vibes I think it could be a hit. Also, the idea of an immortal that feeds on fear and nightmare sounds really interesting. Reasons why it may not appeal, I feel like Alexandra Cristo is one of those that is maybe take or leave. I personally haven't read any of their work, but it may not be amazing. Another aspect is that I think it's YA fantasy, which I know Shannon's moving more towards adult fantasy, so it might be that it's a little young for her. But then I know we both still really enjoy the junk food that is YA fantasy. I Feed Her to the Beast and the Beast is Me by Jameson Shea. And this comes out on the 29th of August. In this book, we are following Laurie, a young black girl who is determined to do anything that it will take to succeed in the world of ballet. And that includes making a deal with a primordial power that lives in the bowels of Paris's catacombs. It sounds full of social commentary as well as being a dark and interesting horror. The vibes that I'm getting from the blurb are somewhat akin to Tiffany Jackson's foray into horror and I know that Shannon has really quite enjoyed Tiffany Jackson, well all of Tiffany Jackson's work but particularly Tiffany Jackson's horror um, and I think this could have a similar tone but regardless I feel like Shannon's very much in her horror era and this is just giving all the best autumnal vibes even though it comes out in August. 
off the top of my head. I genuinely can't think of any reasons why this may not be a hit for her because it feels like it ticks so many of the boxes that she enjoys. Gorgeous Gruesome Faces by Linda Chang comes out on the 9th of November and it's been described as Squid Game meets Wilder Girls. A disgraced K-pop star enters into a deadly game where her ex-BFF that she's obsessed with and was part of a K-pop group is also involved. There's also some mysteries surrounding the death of the third member of the K-pop group and it just sounds vicious, cruel, overall a really fun time. What I think will work for Shannon is the kind of horror potential supernatural aspect of this story. Also that there's trial slash deadly games. When I first read the blurb and it mentioned about deadly games immediately I thought of Saw. I don't think this is going to be like Saw but I think it's going to have a similar sort of death trap, these people are in real trouble sort of vibe to it. I also think the aspect of toxic friendship is something that will appeal to Shannon. In terms of what I think may not appeal, the fact that it's dealing with fame and pop stars may not be as intriguing, as interesting to Shannon. Mr. Magic by Kirsten White. This book comes out on the 8th of August. This one is slightly cheap because I know that it's on Shannon's radar, but I also think that there's so many boxes that this book ticks that I really think she would enjoy. So the premise of this book is that a group of stars of the hit TV show Mr. Magic which was tragically and unexpectedly shut down 30 years ago, get together in a remote, deserted film complex and they're kind of trying to piece together what actually happened at the tragic end of their TV show. Things that I think would appeal to Shannon about this, I think there's definitely a certain appeal to the idea of the tragic end to TV show and the drama aspect. To me, this blurb brought to mind the film Poltergeist, which I've never actually seen the film, but I am familiar with all the tragedy that surrounded that film franchise. And that's what this blurb brought to mind. Um, I also think it's going to be quite interesting seeing these frenemy type relationships between this group of friends. I also think the fact that it's not necessarily like a locked room thriller mystery but it is a very limited cast of characters and I think there's going to be an element of creepiness to it. Why I think this may not work. One because Shannon was so disappointed by Hyde. It did not live up to its promise. It was a bit rough. And I think that's going to make her very nervous about trying a kiss and white again. And paired with that, the fact that the hardback for this book at the time of filming is £22 and four pence which obviously is a lot of money for something that's going to be a gamble. I do genuinely think that based on the premise, this could actually be a hit with Shannon. But I also think it could make her very angry. So maybe a good hate read. But no, we're not doing that with this list. We are doing books that we are genuinely interested in. New Adult by Timothy Janowski which comes out on the 15th of August. This has been described as 13 going on 30 meets one last stop. It is a 
queer romance where a 23 year old man is trying to make it with his comedy stand up when he is invited to his sister's wedding he finally gathers the nerve to invite his crush as his date for the wedding however he gets a invite to a potentially career changing stand up opportunity and ends up missing his sister's wedding which means that obviously he's missed he's missed his sister's wedding but it also means he ends up standing up his crush absolutely devastated he makes a wish on some magic healing crystals uh that he could just skip to the good part of his life he wakes up it's seven years later he seemingly has everything he wants but no one in, that was important to him in his life at 23 is in his life anymore including the fact that his crush hates his guts now I think this will work because it's queer because it's got 13 going on 30 vibes and I'm pretty sure Shannon really enjoys that movie and I just think overall it sounds like a cute good time why it may not work so much it is book three in a series of standalone romance novels and I know that Shannon's very similar to me in that she likes to read even standalone series um in the order that they came out but beyond that I think it has a potential to be really enjoyable obviously romance can be very hit and miss and it is an incredibly subjective genre Dark Moon Shallow Sea by David R Slayton this book comes out on the 31st of October in this book it seems like the world is split into into people that worship the sun god Hyperion and people that worship the moon goddess Phoebe however based on the blurb this book kicks off with Phoebe the moon goddess having been murdered by knights of the sun god and now souls are unable to be ferried into the underworld and they linger as shade to feast on the blood of the living the main characters of this book are essentially enemies to lovers i think is going to be the dynamic because you've got a child of night called wraith who is a thief and discovers about an artifact that's just too tempting not to steal and then we have seth who is a knight of the sun god however the sun god's power actually burns him and he's got unknown origins perhaps i'm not selling this book quite as much as i would like but on a personal standpoint i really enjoy david r slayton's writing this is the same author that wrote the and adam binder series which thoroughly recommend but the reason why this made my list of books that I think Shannon would love is that it's been compared to Mistborn and right now she is on a massive Mistborn kick and really really loving the world so it, it's got to make this list to be honest and I think whilst I haven't necessarily sold the story as well as i could i think this book has all the potential and i'm not a hundred percent sure where shannon may not enjoy it because i think it has a lot of the kind of fun quirky fantasy elements that i think she could really enjoy and the final book on my list is Medusa's Sisters by Lauren J. A. Bear and it comes out on the 12th of September. This is a book that focuses, as the title might suggest, on Medusa's sisters whose names I'm probably going to butcher 
but Sathano and Uruli. And the idea is that they are often just relinquished to the other Gorgons in Mythos. And this is aiming to flesh out their stories and give them depth and intrigue. The reason that this book has made my list of recommendations for Shannon is that I know she really, really, really enjoyed Medusa by Jesse Burton. And this is giving me kind of similar vibes, but for the sisters. And I think that could be very interesting. Reasons why it may not necessarily work. I'm not familiar with the author and I'm not sure if Shannon is familiar with the author as well. Also, potentially, Medusa by Jesse Burton was such a strong story that it's going to be hard for a story that's kind of similar to compare to the same level. I've just noticed that this book is actually a debut, so I guess neither of us are obviously going to know anything about this author's work if it's their debut. So those were the 10 upcoming releases that I think Shannon, my best friend, had in the books, would really enjoy. So let me know in the comments downstairs which books on this list sound interesting to you. But now it's over to Shannon. Hey gorgeous! Let me know which three books sound most interesting from this list. And I look forward to buddy reading them with you, discussing them with you, and just overall living our best reading life. So until next time, love you! Bye!